Tony Oliver, and you're tuned in to Anime3000.com. Well, I started in a show called Robotech many, 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 many years ago. I played the voice of Rick Hunter, and that's really what started my career. Um, I've also done um, the voices of, I did the voice of Saba on Power Rangers. I've uh, recently been Lupin the Third on TV, on the Cartoon Network version. Um, uh, Elreka 7, Gurren Lagann, um, I'm just Hibiki and Bandred, I've been in show bits, um, um, lots and lots and lots of different places. It's, I mean, I've also did Harry and Gungrave, and, uh, and I've done a lot of different kinds of roles. I do a lot of video games these days as well, a lot of our Japanese RPG games. And it, I think it's just what, uh, what I'm drawn to, and you know, uh, essentially the way it tends to work in, in, in the business is that you get typecast a little bit in, in the certain kinds of shows and certain genre. And that's fine, because it keeps you working. Um, and so that's why you tend to find me in those, those kind of roles. In terms of video games, um, video games is a more technical art. I mean, there's still a little bit of art involved, but since I've done so many of them have been RPGs, uh, I, I, they're still acting, there's still story, there's still relationships. It's more difficult because you have so much dialogue and very little of it is in context since they have to keep the dialogue, um, I guess, generic enough so it can be used in different parts of the game. So in that, in that respect, I find it a lot more challenging and uh, in some cases a lot more fun depending on the dialogue. Now if it's four hours of screaming, like when I did um, Ace Combat 3, it was like three hours of screaming, that's not so fun. Um, animation and anime is all about the acting, so it's a lot less technical, a little bit more organic, and, and in that respect it's, it's a little easier. <laughs> Well, I started out as a stage actor. I, uh, I, I, I mean, if you really want to get to it, I mean, I was in sixth grade, and I got to sing the solo in the school uh, in the school Christmas pageant, and um, and I got a standing ovation, and I kind of went, "This is cool. I like this," and that kind of led me later in junior high. I started doing a little bit of theater, and uh, and again, I, I just loved being on the stage. And I had a very good teacher. Uh, she's a director now, actually, out in the world. Her name is Barbara Epstein, and she she really kind of gave me this great sense of what a character was and what acting is and and um, and I, I was hooked I was absolutely hooked not not only by the applause but by the by the craft of acting uh, so after I got out of school I, I went into theater uh, I got into uh, as much as I could um, you know trying to do theater in Los Angeles and make a living is uh, is kind of a at the time was kind of a fool's errand but but I did try and I tried to break into television and radio and things like that and I did a little work on radio for a while um, and eventually I was looking for a, I was looking I was desperate I was out of work and I there was an ad that said looking for someone who do uh, who sounds under 18 that's over 18 and has had experience in ADR so I went in and did what every good actor uh, does I lied told them I had experience and I was cast as the, the lead in a thing called the sea prince and the fire child which was a, an anime feature out of San Rio. And, um, and that eventually ended up on television, and I got a phone call about a year and a half, two years later, they're looking for somebody to do this little show called Macross. And that became Robotech, and that's kind of how I, I kind of landed. And I found out that, that I wasn't so good on film. I liked stage work, but there wasn't a lot of work to be done there, but there was voiceover work. And so I, um, I just continued with that, and eventually learned how to write it and adapt it, and eventually direct it, and that's, uh, that's kind of kept me going. So I do a combination of things, and that's how I'm able to, to, to put the, together and raise a family and do all those things. First, get a good background in acting. Voice acting is not about making funny voices. There's, 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 in, in Los Angeles, there's four or five guys that do all the funny voices. That's it. That's it. They're already there. They're, you're not going to take their jobs. So you need to get a very good background in acting. Theater is most important. And the reason I say theater is it translates best to the microphone. In theater, you have to be bigger than life. On a microphone, you have to be bigger than life. Um, that's the first thing to do. The second thing to do is learn how to use your voice. Learn how to breathe. Learn how to... Uh, how to how to project your voice uh, too many people are, are really good actors that but they're all quiet and they're trying to be all deep but that doesn't work you have to speak loudly in order to get a microphone to help work for you and thirdly is don't expect it to happen overnight um, this is this is a tough profession to get into 
uh, you want to get into it, and you you know don't don't sell everything and move to Los Angeles and think you're going to make it in two weeks. Uh, you want to get some some chops behind you. You want to do some local voice acting, uh, local radio stations, local ad agencies in small towns. That's a great place to start. I started that way. I did a lot of that stuff in Central California. Um, and and get your chops together before you make the move to the big city. And then it's all about tenacity. It doesn't happen overnight. Uh, uh, overnight success is five to ten years. So, um, you know, you got to keep at it and keep at it and keep at it and network and learn and get better and get better and get better and understand that your dream may never happen. But the race goes to the person who sticks around the longest. Generally. Uh, I just finished directing uh, K-On! So K-On! has just been released. Um, uh, that should be out. Uh, that's actually, I think the second volume is out and it's continued to going out. Um, I, I'm doing a series of voice acting workshops around the country. You can find out about that at www.adventuresinvoiceacting.com. I've just launched a new audio series to teach voice acting for people who can't afford to take our workshops. Uh, they're, they're, they're 10, uh, 30 to 45 minute lessons on, on different various aspects on workshops. You can find it at that same website as well. Um, I'm about to start work on a, on, a, on a Media Blaster show that I can't talk about yet. And, um, and just uh, keep looking for, um, for, uh, um, for Naruto and Bleach. I do voices on both of those and there's new episodes coming up. <laughs>